The sun hung low in the sky, casting a warm golden hue over the small town of Millbrook, nestled deep in the heart of the Midwest. It was the kind of place where everyone knew everyone else, and change came slow, if at all. The main street was lined with brick buildings that had seen better days, their faded signs telling stories of a town once more prosperous. Now with the local factory, the town's lifeblood, facing possible closure, a sense of unease lingered in the air. 14-year-old Ethan Thompson lived in a modest two-bedroom house on the edge of town with his father John and older brother Ryan. Life in Millbrook was predictable, if not monotonous, and for Ethan, that predictability weighed heavily on his young shoulders. Every morning, he'd watch his father and brother leave for the factory, their faces set in the same grim expression that spoke of a hard day's work and little to look forward to. It was expected that Ethan would follow in their footsteps, both figuratively and literally. John, a man of few words but strong opinions, had always emphasized the importance of hard work and practicality. Football will toughen you up, son, he'd say, handing Ethan his gear with a firm nod. Ryan, already well on his way to becoming a star on the high school team, would flash a grin and ruffle Ethan's hair, adding, You'll get the hang of it, kid. Just gotta stick with it. But football wasn't Ethan's passion. He tried to care. He really did. But the thud of the ball, the rough tackles, and the locker room banter left him feeling out of place. He wasn't built for the gridiron. His heart wasn't in it. Yet he played along because that was what was expected of him. It was a Wednesday afternoon when Ethan's life took an unexpected turn. After school, he trudged towards the football field, his backpack slung over one shoulder, weighed down more by reluctance than books. Practice didn't start for another 30 minutes, and the thought of spending that time sitting in the bleachers, listening to the older boys brag about their latest conquests, filled him with a sense of dread. As he walked past a row of shops, something caught his eye. An open door leading into a small, unassuming building sandwiched between the hardware store and a cafe. From within, he heard music, soft at first, then louder, more distinct. It wasn't the blaring rock or rap that he was used to hearing around town. This was different, something more graceful, more alive. His curiosity peaked. Ethan peered inside. The room was a dance studio, its polished wooden floors gleaming under the afternoon sun that streamed in through large windows. Mirrors lined one wall, reflecting the movements of a group of dancers, girls and boys around his age, moving with an elegance and precision that left Ethan spellbound. They twirled, leaped, and spun with a fluidity that seemed almost magical. The music swelled, filling the space with an energy that made Ethan's heart race. He stood there, transfixed, forgetting about football, about his father's expectations, about everything. For those few minutes, all that mattered was the dance. The way the dancers seemed to float, their faces alight with concentration and joy. It was a world so different from the one Ethan knew, and yet it called to him in a way he couldn't explain. Can I help you? A voice broke through his reverie. Ethan jumped, turning to see a woman standing beside him. She was tall and slender, with a gentle smile and eyes that seemed to see right through him. She must have been in her early thirties, with a grace about her that matched the dancers in the room. I, I was just looking, Ethan stammered, suddenly feeling out of place. The woman's smile widened. I'm Miss Grace. I teach the dance classes here. Are you interested in joining? Ethan opened his mouth to respond, but the words caught in his throat. Join? Him? A boy from a family where dance was never spoken of, let alone encouraged, it seemed impossible. I don't think so, he managed to say, but the hesitation in his voice betrayed him. Miss Grace nodded as if she understood more than he had said. It's not for everyone, she replied kindly, but if you ever change your mind, you're always welcome to try. Ethan mumbled a quick thanks and hurried out of the studio, his heart pounding. As he made his way to the football field, the music and the sight of those dancers lingered in his mind, refusing to let go. That night, as Ethan lay in bed, staring at the ceiling, he replayed the scene over and over. The way the dancers moved, how the music seemed to flow through them, and the look of sheer determination and joy on their faces. It was something he'd never felt on the football field, not even close. For the first time in his life, Ethan felt a spark, a tiny ember of passion 
that he didn't fully understand, but knew he couldn't ignore. And though he had no idea what it meant or where it would lead, he couldn't shake the feeling that something had shifted inside him. Something important. As sleep finally claimed him, Ethan made a silent promise to himself. He would return to that studio, even if just to watch. Because for the first time, he had found something that made him feel alive. And he wasn't ready to let that go. The days after Ethan's first encounter with the dance studio were filled with a strange, restless energy. Football practice continued as usual, but Ethan's mind was elsewhere. He could still hear the music from the studio, feel the rhythm in his bones, and see the dancers moving gracefully across the floor. It was like a secret he carried with him everywhere, a secret that both thrilled and terrified him. Unable to resist the pull any longer, Ethan found himself standing outside the dance studio again the following week. This time, he didn't just peek through the door. He stepped inside, heart pounding. Miss Grace noticed him immediately, her warm smile welcoming him back. Changed your mind? She asked, her tone gentle but knowing. Ethan hesitated only for a moment before nodding. I think so, he replied, trying to sound more confident than he felt. Miss Grace led him into the studio, where the other students were warming up. They glanced at him, curiously, but didn't say much, just nodding in acknowledgement. Ethan felt out of place, but Miss Grace's calm presence was reassuring. We'll start with the basics, she said, guiding him through the first steps. Her instructions were clear and precise, her movements fluid and graceful. Ethan struggled at first, his body stiff and uncoordinated, but Miss Grace was patient, correcting his posture, encouraging him to relax and feel the music. Days turned into weeks, and Ethan's secret life as a dancer began to take shape. Every afternoon after school, he would slip away to the studio, making sure no one followed him. The thrill of secrecy was both exciting and nerve-wracking. He was constantly on edge, afraid that someone, his father, his brother, a friend, would discover his new passion. But in the studio, all that fear melted away. Under Miss Grace's guidance, Ethan's movements became more confident, more expressive. He started to feel the music in a way he never had before, letting it guide him, letting it take him somewhere far away from the pressures of home and the expectations of the world around him. Miss Grace noticed his progress. You have a natural talent, Ethan, she told him one day after class, her voice filled with quiet conviction. With practice, you could become something special, the words filled Ethan with a mix of pride and fear. He had never been told he was special before. Not like this. Football coaches praised toughness, resilience, and teamwork. But dance was different. It required something more, a connection between body and soul that Ethan hadn't known he possessed. But even as his confidence in the studio grew, the weight of his secret became heavier. At home, things were getting worse. The factory's future was still uncertain, and John's frustration was palpable. He came home late every night, exhausted and angry, his patience worn thin. Ryan, too, was feeling the strain, taking on extra shifts to help make ends meet. He had little sympathy for Ethan's lack of enthusiasm for football, often reminding him that he needed to man up and focus on what really mattered. Football isn't just a game, Ethan, Ryan said one evening after practice, tossing his sweaty jersey into the laundry pile. It teaches you discipline, teamwork, things that'll help you in the real world. You can't just float through life doing whatever you want. Ethan nodded silently, his eyes on the floor. Ryan didn't know how close his words hit to home, how every day Ethan felt like he was living a double life, trying to balance his family's expectations with this new passion that consumed him. At night, Ethan would lie awake, staring at the ceiling, the image of his mother flickering in his mind. She had been gone for years, taken by an illness that Ethan was too young to fully understand at the time. But he remembered her softness, the way she used to hum to herself while cooking, the way she'd look at him with such warmth and understanding. She had always encouraged him to be himself, to find what made him happy. Ethan wondered what she would think of his dancing, whether she would have been proud or if she would have understood his fear. He missed her more than ever, especially now as he navigated this strange new world alone. The conflict at home grew sharper with each passing day. John's temper flared more easily, and the tension between him and Ryan was almost unbearable. Ethan tried to stay out of the way, but his avoidance only made him feel more isolated, more disconnected from the people who were supposed to be his family. 
In the studio, however, everything was different. It was as if time stood still when Ethan danced, the worries and fears melting away, replaced by the rhythm and flow of the music. Here he was free, free to express himself, free to dream, free to be something more than what was expected of him. But the fear of being discovered was always there, lurking in the back of his mind. What if John found out? What if Ryan knew? The thought of their disappointment, their anger, was almost too much to bear. And yet the idea of giving up dance was even more unbearable. Ethan knew he couldn't keep this secret forever. Sooner or later, something would have to give. But for now, he danced, clinging to the small spark of hope that maybe, just maybe, he could find a way to be true to himself without losing everything else in the process. Ethan's double life had continued for months, and with every secret trip to the dance studio, he felt both more exhilarated and more anxious. His dancing had improved significantly under Miss Grace's watchful eye, and she had even encouraged him to enter a regional dance competition. It was an exciting opportunity, and the thought of performing on stage filled Ethan with a mix of nerves and anticipation. But the idea of telling his father or brother was still unthinkable. The dance competition was only a few weeks away, and Miss Grace had given Ethan a brochure to take home, a reminder of the event, with all the details he would need. He tucked it into his backpack, planning to keep it hidden until the day of the competition. But as the day approached, Ethan's nerves started to get the better of him. He knew he couldn't keep this secret forever, but the fear of how his family would react kept him silent. One evening, after a particularly tense day at the factory, John came home earlier than usual. Ethan was in his room practicing the steps Miss Grace had taught him, his dance shoes lying on the floor beside his bed. Lost in his movements, he didn't hear his father's heavy footsteps coming down the hallway. John, intending to ask Ethan about his grades, another source of stress, pushed open the door without knocking. What he saw made him freeze in the doorway. His son, mid-step, wearing an expression of pure concentration and joy, with a pair of worn dance shoes on the floor and a colorful brochure peeking out from the edge of the bed. For a moment, neither of them moved. The shock on Ethan's face was mirrored by the confusion and then the anger that flashed in John's eyes. Slowly, John walked into the room, picked up the brochure, and stared at it as if it were something foreign and incomprehensible. What's this? John's voice was low, controlled, but Ethan could hear the anger bubbling underneath. Ethan felt his heart drop. Dad, I can explain. Explain what? John interrupted, his voice rising. That you've been sneaking around behind my back? Wasting time with this, this nonsense? It's not nonsense, Ethan said, his voice trembling, but firm. It's dance. I've been practicing for months. Miss Grace thinks I'm good enough to enter a competition. John's face turned red, the brochure crumpled in his hand. A competition? Ethan, this is ridiculous. You're supposed to be focusing on school, on football, things that will actually get you somewhere in life. Dancing won't pay the bills. It won't put food on the table. It's a waste of time and money, and I won't have you throwing your future away on some silly dream. Ethan felt tears prickling at the corners of his eyes, but he blinked them away. It's not just a dream, Dad. It's something I'm good at, something I love. John shook his head, his expression hard. No more. You're done with this. I won't allow it. At that moment, Ryan appeared in the doorway, having heard the commotion. He took in the scene, the dance shoes, the brochure, and the look of devastation on Ethan's face, and shook his head in disbelief. Dance? Seriously, Ethan? Ryan scoffed. What are you thinking? You're going to make a fool out of yourself and us. Just stick to football and stop messing around. Ethan's anger flared. His hands clenched into fists. You don't understand. Neither of you do. This is important to me, but all you care about is what you want, not what I want. Watch your tone, young man, John warned, his voice cold. You're still a kid, and you don't know what's best for you. That's my job, and I'm telling you, this dancing ends now. Ethan's resolve wavered, but only for a moment. I'm not giving up, he said, his voice barely above a whisper but filled with determination. I'm not. John's eyes narrowed, his temper boiling over. You're grounded, Ethan. No more dance, no more sneaking off to that studio. I'm putting my foot down. With that, John stormed out of the room, the crumpled brochure still in his hand. 
Ryan shot Ethan a look of both pity and scorn before following their father, leaving Ethan alone in his room, his heart heavy with despair. Ethan collapsed onto his bed, tears finally spilling over. The dream he had nurtured so carefully, the passion that had grown so bright, felt like it was being snuffed out before it even had a chance to shine. He was trapped between his love for dance and his father's iron will, and he didn't know how to break free. The next day, Ethan's despair was evident to Miss Grace the moment he walked into the studio. His usual enthusiasm was gone, replaced by a sullen silence that worried her. After class, she pulled him aside. What's going on, Ethan? She asked gently. You're not yourself today. Ethan hesitated, then sighed, the weight of the past 24 hours pressing down on him. My dad found out about the dance, the competition, everything. He said, I can't do it anymore. He thinks it's a waste of time. Miss Grace's heart ached for him. She had seen the potential in Ethan from the very beginning, and it pained her to see that light dimmed by the harsh realities of life. But she wasn't ready to give up on him. I'm sorry, Ethan, she said, placing a comforting hand on his shoulder. But I don't think your father understands how important this is to you. Maybe if I talk to him, explain what dance means to you, he'll see things differently. Ethan looked at her with a mix of hope and fear. I don't know, Miss Grace. He's pretty set in his ways. Miss Grace smiled gently. It's worth a try, don't you think? Sometimes people just need a different perspective. Ethan nodded, though his heart still felt heavy. Miss Grace was right. It was worth a try, but he couldn't shake the fear that his father would never change his mind. That evening, Miss Grace arrived at the Thompson home, her calm demeanor hiding the nervousness she felt. John answered the door, surprised to see the elegant woman standing on his porch. Mr. Thompson, she began, her voice polite but firm. I'm Miss Grace, Ethan's dance instructor. I was hoping we could talk about Ethan and his dancing. John's expression hardened, but he stepped aside to let her in. They sat in the living room, the air thick with tension. Miss Grace didn't waste any time. Ethan has a real talent for dance, Mr. Thompson, she said, her voice steady. He's not just doing this for fun. He's shown a level of dedication and skill that's rare for someone his age. Dance has given him confidence, a sense of purpose. I believe he could go far, maybe even make a career out of it. John listened, his face unreadable. When Miss Grace finished, he sighed deeply, rubbing his temples. Miss Grace, I appreciate what you're trying to do. But dancing? It's not practical. It's not something that's going to help Ethan in the long run. I want him to focus on things that will actually secure his future. Miss Grace leaned forward slightly, her voice gentle but insistent. Mr. Thompson, I understand your concerns, but the world is changing and there are many paths to success. Ethan's found something he's passionate about, something that makes him feel alive. Isn't that worth considering? John was silent for a long moment, his thoughts a whirlwind of conflicting emotions. He loved his son, wanted the best for him, but he couldn't shake the fear that dance would lead to disappointment, to failure. And yet, there was a small, nagging doubt. What if Miss Grace was right? What if he was too rigid, too set in his ways, to see that this might be the best thing for Ethan? Finally, he spoke, his voice heavy. I don't know, Miss Grace. I'm not saying no, but I'm not saying yes either. I just, I need some time to think about it. Miss Grace nodded, understanding that this was the best she could hope for right now. That's all I'm asking, Mr. Thompson. Just consider it. Talk to Ethan. See how much this means to him. As Miss Grace left the house, John sat alone in the living room, the brochure still in his hand. The seed of doubt had been planted, and though he didn't know it yet, it was the beginning of a change that would alter the course of Ethan's life and his own forever. The days following Miss Grace's visit were tense in the Thompson household. John remained distant lost in thought as he wrestled with the conflicting emotions stirred by their conversation. Ethan, meanwhile, felt the weight of his father's unresolved decision hanging over him, but he knew he couldn't wait forever. The dance competition was fast approaching, and with or without his father's approval, he was determined to compete. Each day after school, Ethan continued to sneak off to the dance studio, his heart pounding with both excitement and fear. Miss Grace sensed the urgency in his movements, the way he pushed himself harder with each practice, and she knew he was running out of time. You're doing great, Ethan, she said one afternoon as he finished a particularly difficult routine. 
But remember, dance isn't just about perfecting the steps. It's about telling a story, about expressing what's inside you. Let go of the fear and just dance. Ethan nodded, her words resonating deeply. He wanted nothing more than to let go, to dance freely without the shadow of his father's disapproval looming over him. But it wasn't easy. Every time he returned home, he felt the tension in the air, the unspoken questions that neither he nor John were ready to address. Ryan, on the other hand, had started to notice the changes in Ethan, the way he would come home later than usual, the exhaustion that seemed to weigh on him, but also the spark in his eyes that hadn't been there before. Ryan had always been tough on Ethan, pushing him to be strong, to live up to the expectations their father had set, but now he found himself questioning those expectations. One evening, as they sat in the living room watching TV, Ryan turned to Ethan. You've been different lately, he said, his tone less confrontational than usual. What's going on with you? Ethan hesitated, unsure of how much to reveal. I've just been busy, he said, trying to keep his voice casual. Busy with what? Football? Ryan asked, though he already knew the answer. Ethan shook his head. No, not football. Ryan didn't push further, but he nodded thoughtfully. Look, I've been thinking, maybe I was wrong to give you such a hard time. I just wanted you to be tough, you know? To handle life like Dad always says. But I don't know. Maybe there's more than one way to be strong. Ethan looked at his brother, surprised by the unexpected shift in his attitude. Thanks, Ryan, he said quietly. That means a lot. Ryan shrugged, a small smile tugging at the corner of his mouth. Just don't screw up, okay? Ethan smiled back, a bit of the tension easing from his shoulders. It wasn't an endorsement, but it was something. A small sign that maybe, just maybe, he wasn't entirely alone in this. As the day of the competition drew closer, Ethan's nerves began to fray. He practiced tirelessly, pushing his body and mind to the limit. Miss Grace's encouragement kept him going, but the looming fear of his father's reaction cast a shadow over his preparations. He had come too far to turn back now, but the uncertainty gnawed at him. Then, the night before the competition, the worst happened. Ethan was sneaking out of the house, his dance shoes tucked under his arm, when he ran straight into John, who was coming up the driveway after a late shift at the factory. Ethan, John said, his voice a mix of exhaustion and frustration. Where do you think you're going? Ethan froze, his heart pounding. I was just going out he stammered, though he knew there was no use in lying. John's eyes narrowed as he saw the shoes in Ethan's hand. You're still doing this. After I told you to stop? Ethan swallowed hard, his resolve faltering but not breaking. Dad, I have to do this. The competition is tomorrow. I've been working so hard. No! John cut him off, his voice sharp. You're not going. I thought I made myself clear. This dancing, it's not what you should be focusing on. You need to get your head on straight, Ethan. Ethan's frustration boiled over. The months of secrecy, fear, and determination all coming to a head. Why can't you just understand? He burst out, his voice shaking with emotion. This is what I want. This is who I am. I'm not Ryan. I'm not you. I'm me. And I want to dance, Dad. I need to dance. John was taken aback by the intensity of Ethan's outburst. He had never seen his son like this. So passionate so desperate to be heard. For a moment, he didn't know what to say. The words caught in his throat. Ethan continued, his voice steadier now. I know you think it's a waste of time, that it's not practical, but it's the only thing that makes me feel alive, that makes me feel like I'm worth something. I'm not giving up on this, Dad. Not now, not ever. John's fist clenched at his sides, his mind a whirlwind of conflicting emotions. He wanted to protect Ethan, to steer him toward a stable future but he couldn't ignore the fire in his son's eyes. The same fire that had driven him to be the man he was today. Ethan, John began, his voice softer, but still firm. I just don't want to see you get hurt. The world is tough, and I've seen too many dreams crushed by reality. I don't want that for you. Ethan's gaze didn't waver. I know it's a risk, but I'd rather take that risk and fail than never try at all. This is my dream, Dad. Please let me have it. The silence that followed was thick with tension, both father and son standing their ground. John looked at Ethan, really looked at him, and saw not a child,
but a young man who was ready to fight for what he believed in. It was a moment of realization, a moment where John had to confront his own fears, his own doubts. Finally, John sighed, the weight of his decision pressing down on him. I can't say I understand, Ethan, but I won't stop you. If this is what you really want, then go, do your best. Ethan's heart soared with relief and gratitude. Thank you, Dad, he said, his voice choked with emotion. John nodded, his expression still troubled but softer now. Just don't forget who you are, Ethan. Don't lose yourself in this. I won't, Ethan promised. And he meant it. He had found himself in dance, not lost himself. That night, as Ethan returned to the studio for one last practice before the competition, he felt lighter, freer than he had in months. The battle wasn't over, but he had taken a huge step toward claiming his dream. With Miss Grace's guidance and his family's reluctant support, he was ready to face whatever came next. The competition awaited, and Ethan was determined to give it everything he had. The morning of the competition dawned bright and clear, but Ethan's heart felt anything but light. Despite the small victory of his father's reluctant approval, doubt had crept into his mind overnight. He had tossed and turned, his thoughts churning with fear and uncertainty. What if he wasn't good enough? What if, after all the hard work, he failed? Worse, what if his father was right, and this dream of his was just a waste of time? As he sat at the breakfast table, pushing cereal around his bowl, Ethan could barely muster the energy to eat. John was at work, and the house was quiet, but the silence only made the weight on his chest feel heavier. He wasn't sure he could go through with it. Ryan, who had been watching his brother closely, finally broke the silence. You're not eating, he said, his tone more gentle than usual. Ethan shrugged, not meeting his brother's eyes. I'm not hungry. Ryan leaned back in his chair, studying Ethan. You're nervous, he said matter-of-factly. Yeah, Ethan admitted, his voice barely above a whisper. I don't know if I can do this, Ryan. What if, what if I mess up? What if dad's right? Ryan frowned, leaning forward. Listen, Ethan, I know I gave you a hard time about this dance stuff. Maybe I was just jealous, or maybe I didn't understand. But what I do know is that you've worked harder for this than I've ever seen you work for anything. That means something. And you know what? It takes guts to follow your dream, even when everyone's telling you it's stupid. Ethan looked up, surprised by the unexpected encouragement. Ryan had always been the tough one, the one who did things by the book. But now there was a softness in his eyes, a hint of something Ethan hadn't seen before. Respect. Ryan continued, his voice firm. You've come this far, man. Don't back out now. If this is what you want, then go for it. And if you fall, at least you'll know you tried. But don't let fear make that decision for you. Ethan swallowed hard, the lump in his throat making it difficult to speak. I just, I want Dad to be proud of me, you know? But I feel like I'm letting him down. Ryan shook his head. Dad's just scared, Ethan. He's seen a lot of dreams get crushed, and he doesn't want that to happen to you. But if you show him how much this means to you, really show him, I think he'll come around. Ethan nodded slowly, Ryan's words giving him the courage he needed. You're right, he said, a spark of determination returning to his voice. I have to do this. Ryan grinned and stood up. Good. Now let's get you to that competition. Ethan blinked, surprised. You're going to take me? Yeah, why not? Ryan shrugged, grabbing the car keys. I want to see what all the fuss is about. The drive to the competition was quiet, but the air between them was filled with unspoken support. When they arrived at the auditorium, Ethan's nerves kicked in again, but this time, he didn't let them overwhelm him. He checked in, changed into his costume, and joined the other dancers backstage. As he waited for his turn, Ethan's mind raced. The sound of the audience, the muffled music from the stage, the sight of the other dancers warming up. It all felt surreal, like he was floating through a dream. He could barely believe he was here, about to perform in front of so many people, about to put everything he had on the line. But then he remembered Miss Grace's words, the countless hours of practice, and the encouragement from Ryan that morning. He took a deep breath, centering himself, and waited for his name to be called. Meanwhile, in the audience, Ryan found a seat near the back, his eyes scanning the crowd. He wasn't sure if John would show up, but he hoped for Ethan's sake that their father would find a way to be there. Just as the announcer introduced the next performer, Ethan Thompson, 
Ryan spotted a familiar figure slipping into the auditorium, looking slightly out of place in his work clothes. John stood at the back for a moment, his eyes focused on the stage where Ethan was about to appear. Then, after what seemed like an eternity, he made his way down the aisle and took a seat beside Ryan, his expression unreadable. Ethan stepped onto the stage, the bright lights making it impossible to see the faces in the audience. But he didn't need to see them. He knew who was out there, and that knowledge gave him the strength he needed. The music began, and for a moment the world fell away. There was only the rhythm, the movement, the sheer joy of dancing. Ethan poured everything he had into the performance. Every doubt, every fear, every hope, and every dream. His body moved with a grace and power that surprised even him. The hours of practice coming together in a way that felt almost magical. He danced with his heart, letting go of everything except the music and the story he was telling through his movements. The audience faded into the background, and it was just him, the stage, and the dance. When the music ended, there was a moment of stunned silence, followed by thunderous applause. Ethan stood there, breathless, as the realization of what he had just done slowly sank in. He had done it. He had danced like he never had before, and it had been enough. As he took his final bow, he caught a glimpse of the audience and saw his father standing there, clapping, his face a mixture of pride and something else, something softer. It was a look Ethan had never seen before, and it filled him with a warmth that no amount of applause could match. Backstage after the performance, Ethan was swarmed by the other dancers, congratulating him on a job well done. But his eyes were searching for one person, and when he saw John approaching, his heart skipped a beat. John stood in front of him, his expression still hard to read. For a moment, neither of them spoke, the tension thick in the air. Then, without warning, John pulled Ethan into a tight hug, holding him close. I'm proud of you, son, John said, his voice thick with emotion. I don't understand it, not completely, but I see how much this means to you, and that's enough for me. You did good, Ethan. You did real good. Ethan felt tears sting his eyes, but this time they were tears of joy. Thanks, Dad, he whispered, his voice choked with gratitude. Ryan joined them, clapping Ethan on the back. Told you you'd nail it, he said with a grin. The awards ceremony followed, and to Ethan's surprise and delight, he was announced as the winner of a scholarship to a prestigious dance academy. It felt like a dream, too good to be true. But as he stood on that stage holding the certificate, he knew it was real. The drive home that night was filled with laughter and stories, a stark contrast to the tension that had filled the car that morning. Ethan couldn't stop smiling, the excitement bubbling up inside him. He was going to the dance academy. He was going to pursue his dream. As they pulled into the driveway, John turned to Ethan, his expression serious but kind. I know this isn't the path I would have chosen for you, Ethan but I see now that it's your path, and I'll support you every step of the way. Ethan nodded, his heart full. I won't let you down, Dad. I know you won't, John replied, his voice filled with a quiet confidence that Ethan had never heard before. The next few weeks flew by in a whirlwind of preparations. There were forms to fill out, bags to pack, and goodbyes to be said. Miss Grace was overjoyed at Ethan's success, and as she hugged him goodbye, she whispered, Remember, Ethan, dance with your heart, and you'll never go wrong. Finally, the day came for Ethan to leave for the academy. His family gathered at the bus station, their goodbyes bittersweet but filled with hope. As the bus pulled away, Ethan looked out the window, watching his father and brother wave until they were out of sight. He didn't know exactly what the future held, but for the first time in his life, he felt ready to face it. The road ahead was uncertain, but it was his road and he was determined to dance his way down it, no matter where it led. And as the bus rumbled on, carrying him toward a new beginning, Ethan smiled, filled with the hope and excitement of a dream finally within reach.